Christ. Now, while that's going on in the heavenlies, I don't know how long that'll take, but the Lord's looking to reward every one of his children. These are five crowns. There may be some other types of rewards that we get, but these are ones spoken of the scripture as crowns. Okay, so what about that? Uh, after the judgment seat of Christ, um, what's happening down here on earth is a seven-year period. And we'll mark that, okay? Seven years called the tribulation period. The tribulation period. This is a very important time in the scripture from chapter 6 to chapter 19 in the book of Revelation is talking about this time. All those chapters are given over to talk about this time, the tribulation period. And the, the, um, after the rapture, what will happen is that we'll have the rise of the Antichrist. Now, he's not going to be called the Antichrist. He's going to be a man whom the devil's going to use, but he's going to rise in prominence. He'll be real charismatic, and he'll be a man of peace. Everybody's swooning over him, and people are full of confusion and chaos down here on earth, and he seems to have the answers, and they will eventually give him power, give him their authority, and with him will come a one world government eventually will be a one world government he's the king over all the earth and he has other people reigning underneath him but with the rise of the antichrist also comes a one world religion one world religion it's a false religion it's uh it's called uh, she's called the great harlot because instead of it being a pure and chaste wife of the Lord like she's portraying herself to be, she is running around with all the evil philosophies and, and all the false religions of the world combined into one. Okay? So these will be some things that will be happening at the very beginning of this tribulation period. And it's I'm got to, kind of trying to keep this in basic order the way that your sheets are here. Um, so one thing, I'll have the rise of the Antichrist, one world religion, um, one, one world government. How about this? You will have a treaty, the Antichrist, this is very important, will confirm a treaty, a covenant, a treaty with Israel, the nation Israel, for seven years. That's seven years. He's not going to keep it. This is the seven-year period. Once he confirms that treaty, that means, excuse me, once he confirms that treaty, that means that the uh, tribulation period will have begun. That is the starter, not the rapture, but the, the confirmation of the treaty. Okay? The one, the one, the treaty with Israel. Also, during the first three and a half years, the temple in Jerusalem, Jewish temple, will be built and sacrifices will be going on there all right um, also there will be two witnesses I'm kind of running through this real quick and for the first three and a half years there will be two Old Testament prophets and they're called the two witnesses and they will be preaching for the first three and a half years in Jerusalem. The Antichrist hates them. He wants to kill them. God's protecting them. Nobody can stop them. All the news is trying to blank them out. People are hearing this all over the world, their message of the truth of the scripture. Um, we're not going to go into who these two Old Testament prophets uh, may be. Uh, we know for sure about one of them, uh, but we won't get into that now. Now, during the halfway through, God allows them to be put to death, to be murdered. And, uh, and then in the second half, starting at this mid of the seven years, is what happens is the Antichrist 
who's made that treaty for seven years, goes into the temple, midway point right here, goes into the temple, and he himself sets himself up and says, I am God. Worship me. And from there on out, the last three and a half years, we have a Jewish holocaust again. And he tries to destroy every Jew on the earth. And actually, according to the book of Zechariah chapter 13, it says that two-thirds of the Jews, two-thirds, write that down, two-thirds of the Jews will be killed during that time. Two-thirds. Okay? So, that's that. Now, all of this time, what's happening here on the earth, this is seven-year period where God plans to pour out his wrath upon the earth. Jesus said this in Matthew 24 and verse number 21. He says this, and this is in your notes. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, to that time right there, that seven-year period, especially the last three and a half years, no, nor ever shall be. So that's in Matthew 24, 21. If you didn't get that, uh, look that up, Matthew 24, 21. So what Jesus is saying, this period of history, from Adam and Eve to the last people in the world to the final end of the final great white throne judgment and the new heaven and new earth, this is the worst period of human history. It is going to be an awful time. What's going to happen? God's going to judge the world with seven seal judgments. Seven seal judgments. Okay? Followed by seven trumpet. Trumpet judgments. And then followed by seven vial judgments. And these are awful. We're not going to go into those right now. We're just rushing through this. But what's going to culminate at the end of that seven years, when all this is going on, Jesus Christ himself is going to come from heaven all the way down to the earth. He'll set his foot on the Mount of Olives there, and he will take over the world. Here's Here's what will happen right then. At that time will be, I write this down, the Battle of Armageddon. I'm not going to write it on here. The Battle of Armageddon. That's the battle. That the armies of the world will be there in Jerusalem and around about Jerusalem. Going to attack the, the Jews and uh, that are head that are that are in uh, probably Petra, and they'll be all over that area from all over the world. And he, they'll turn to try to attack him. He'll destroy them. That's the battle of Armageddon. The Antichrist and the false prophet, those two people who were the Antichrist, the, the political ruler, and the false prophet, the religious ruler, will be the first two people then put in the lake of fire at the second coming. Thirdly, Satan is bound for a thousand years in what is called the bottomless pit. Okay, Satan is put there. He and all his demons. And then... While he's there, uh, the Lord Jesus will have the judgment of the nations. All the living people that are alive at that time will be judged. And if they're saved, God's going to say, enter into my kingdom on earth. And in the, in the disciples' prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And this is his kingdom. And all the saved people in human bodies, fleshly bodies like we have now, will be put into that kingdom. All the unsaved people when he judges the nations will be put into hell. Okay? And then the reign of Christ. Christ will rule uninterrupted for a thousand years on the earth. He will be the king of kings, lord of lords. We will rule and reign with him depending on how faithful we are now. He'll give us opportunity to have a big job, big or job then. Okay, a thousand years. And uh, then Satan is loose. Now, Jesus is actually reigning forever. But then Satan is loose for a short period of time here. 
He goes out and deceives the, the nations of the world one more time. And uh, God puts down that rebellion. Then, after that, we have the great white throne judgment. Let me scoot over here. Great white throne judgment. Okay? And the Lord himself will sit on this throne, the Lord Jesus, and all the unsaved people of the whole world world that ever was on the world ever was even even on the earth from the first to the last will stand here this is for the unsaved and this is not to determine if they're saved or not the fact that they're there means they're unsaved it'll be to determine the degrees of punishment in hell this is a judgment for the unsaved only the unsaved over here this great this judgment seat of christ is a judgment for the saved only the saved this is to determine the amount of rewards. This is to determine the amount of punishment forever in hell. Everyone will be equally being punished in hell, but everyone will not be punished equally in hell. Jesus says, told the Pharisees, ye shall have greater, more than greater damnation. Okay, And then God destroys the world and makes a new heaven and a new earth and that's where God's people will be for all eternity several things that will not be in that new heaven and new earth okay um, there shall be no according to Revelation 21 4 there should be no more death neither sorrow nor crying Neither shall there be any more pain. This is all because there'll be no more sin. And God will make all things new. Okay? So, that is the basic outline. Now, let me take the top of the second page here and finish out with this. Referring to this tribulation period, Jesus also said, this tribulation period here, that's seven years. Jesus also said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be, listen to the word, pestilences. That word means deadly diseases. It's a plural word, which means there will be not just one, but there will be many of these. And it says, it's plural according to Strong's Concordance, and it means a pestilence in diverse, D-I-V-E-R-S, regions means different regions all over the place is what it's basically saying, like the pandemic. Um, and so this is just a thing of the future, worldwide pandemics. You say, are we living in the tribulation period? Absolutely, N-O-T, not. We are not living in the tribulation period. But when something real big is being brought in maybe a house or something and you're a little ways away from that and they're maybe moving some big trailer or something like that it casts a shadow it might cast a shadow where you are it's not actually they're not building that thing on top of you you're not they're not laying it on you but it's casting a shadow on you because it's pretty close well i think that's what's happening with this pandemic it's a foreshadow F-O-R-E-S-H-A-D-O-W. It's a foreshadow of that time. And so we don't need to fear this, but we may see other things. We may be going through and seeing foreshadows of other things that may be pretty tough uh, to deal with here in the future. But it is not, we are not in the tribulation period. We are looking forward to this day, the rapture, when the Lord takes us out of here. And then pours out seven years of terrible judgments and wrath upon the earth and then comes back down to the earth, takes over the world, will rule and reign with him if we're saved and then God will have the great white throne for the unsaved. He'll make a new heaven and new earth where we will be with him for all eternity. Wonderful, wonderful news. Prophecy is not given to scare us but rather to prepare us. If we know these things, then when we start seeing some foreshadows of them, we don't get all excited. <gasps> What's going to happen? Okay, uh, we know. We've read the book. We know the story. Uh, and so we can have peace through that.
And so take the notes down, and then when you're done with that, those two pages, take a screenshot of them and send them to me. Thank you.